Uh, hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Okay. I'm deep into trying to work on all those accessories for my OTB fence, but I got sidetracked. On my last video, I came to the realization that I need to make some knobs and T-track for the uh, OTB fence system. Because one thing I've learned, I'm going through a lot of T-bolts and uh, wood knobs. So, with that in mind, and I told you I was going to have to do something... So I got started looking at how to make the T-knobs and make the T-bolts and how to make the actual knobs. And I was going to show you how to make what I call generic knobs that you can then make any shape you want out of them. And it will only take you a few minutes to do the finished knob by doing the initial work to begin with. Anyway, I digress. What we're going to do is I'm going to give you about 15 minutes of talk here. We're going to start off talking about the T-bolts. The, on themselves, how to make them, what to watch out for, and a couple of ways to show you how easy it is to really do this. Because it really is easy, and quite honestly, less than 25 cents is what it's cost me for a 3-inch T-bolt. Um, and it's not difficult at all to do. So let's go in, let's get started. If we get to time, rambling too long before I get done with all of this, I'll do a second video, but I'm just going to break it out. And that video will follow this one either the same day or the next day so that you can get the rest of this. And we'll hopefully we'll do this in two videos. So around 15 minutes a piece, depending upon the rambling. So stay tuned. So let's get into this. To make this, I, you only need two things. You need to have some kind of what they call a slide-in T-nut. And these things are handy to have around the shop. And I actually have two different styles here. When I talked about these the other day, I left a link on how to buy these. And these are stainless steel. And uh, I talked about the length of them to watch out for and that sort of thing. So they fit the track, but yet they don't turn in the track and things like that. But this one here is about 71 cents a piece. And I left you that link. You actually can go a lot cheaper on these, quite honestly. You can go to... I, I bought these, and they also have this in a black finish. Uh, this is a polished finish. And it's about an inch long, and it's still the same one quarter 20 uh, threads in it. And so this one works real well, too, for the T-Track without any problem. And I can get this for about 21 cents a piece. I'll leave a link to where you can buy a 25-pack of these. I think it's in black that I, I found on uh, right on Amazon. So I'll show that to you. So if you want to do the budget way, you can buy these instead with a black finish and have the same thing. But making these is really very, very easy. Now, when we get into making the knobs, I have made knobs using those, as you've seen. But there's actually a better way. If you're going to mass produce, you want to make a whole bunch of knobs quickly, there's a much easier way of doing that and giving them threads and all that. And we'll go over all that when I get into the hardware part of, of this whole series of what we're talking about here. So, uh, as far as making these, you only need two things. You need a batch of these. Like I said, you can buy them in batches of 25 or 100 to get a pretty good price on them. Um, and you want to keep these in, in your shop they're very handy to have around for a lot of different uses which you'll learn about as time goes on here i show you some other things that i do with these that are very handy so to make the very straightforward simple t-bolt that i use in the t-track that i am making my shop and look up t-track uh, search on my videos and you'll find where i show you how to make a t-track in that so anyway all you need is a set of uh, ready rod and you can buy this for a little over a dollar a piece in three foot lengths that's one quarter 20 again uh, because I learned that one quarter 20 is pretty versatile in my shop so for all the hardware I keep I keep other sizes but when it comes to one quarter 20 I try to buy everything couplers you know t-bolts nuts bolts everything inserts everything is based on that quarter 20 so that I have can make just about anything as long as I can do it in a quarter 20 size for the hardware. So once you get your steel rod and you have a, a packet of bolt of the slide in T-nuts, then you're ready to make these. All you have to do is you take your steel rod 
Now, I first got it off. This is 36 inches long. So my simple thought was three inch lengths. It gives you 12 pieces. Bada bing, bada boom. And you make 12 out of one three foot rod. But when I started cutting these apart, I came to the realization pretty fast after I cut four of them that why am I cutting them in three inch lengths? And I turned around and I cut it in six inch lengths instead. And so I have four of these that are three inch lengths and these are, will all be ready to go today. I'll put the last one on here for you in a minute or two to show you how to put that together. But I think that I'm gonna make them in six inch lengths instead and put my T slot on my T nut on both ends. Then I can cut this to any length I want and whatever's left over when I cut it to length, I might even have a piece left over to make a third one. So, and it's a lot less initial cutting if you store them. So for storing them until I need them, I'll just store them like this. And if I need one or two, all I have to do is make one quick cut with my hacksaw and these are ready to go. So, in order to use these things, you're going to want, let me get this out of my way. I don't think I have to show you how to cut it up into the pieces, but once you get them cut up, then you're going to want to attach a nut, a T-nut. Let's use one of these others. Um, you want to attach one of these to here, right at the end. Now, first off, on all T-nuts, you have two sides of it. You have the flat side here, and then you have the side that has that raised area right around where the threads are. And that's pretty much on every single slide-in T-nut will have that. You want that to be towards the threads, and you want this flat part to be the bottom of the T-bolt. So if you look at these T-bolts, the bottom is the flat part, and that little rib is toward the threads. It, it, they slide in better because this side of this thing, believe it or not, is kind of rounded over, but the bottom side is actually kind of sharp. So when this is turned up, it tends to dig into the underside of the track as you're trying to move it. And so I've learned that flipping them this way, it does give you a better sliding action in that wood track. So just a little tip. I always try to make them so that it's always up, that little rib so that it doesn't dig in so much as I'm using it. So, uh, as far as putting it on, I, well, first off, before you cut it, you have to get them ready to be able to put this on there. Because obviously, once you cut these, you're going to have to clean up the edges, of the ends of these, to be able to put a nut on it. Now, I know guys say, well, put a nut on there to begin with everything, but I don't like to thread nuts on here 100 miles long just so I can then cut it. So, what we, there is a better way of doing it. It's easy, and actually I like it better than trying to use the nut to straighten the threads out. What you do, very simply, is I go over to my belt sander, my oscillating belt sander, the rigid. You've seen it in past ones. I have that miter gauge that I use on there so I can put things at a 90 degree. So, let me set up a, an example here. Uh, this is my fake rigid sander. I'm standing there looking at it just like if I was standing over there, and the belt is going this direction, and back here it's going that direction, so it's going around this way. That's the direction it is. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to want to take and put your miter gauge and slide it in so you have your 90 degree, so when you slide this in, you have this 90 degree area on this side of that belt, because remember that belt's going this way. So you want to have this 90 degree between your miter gauge and your sanding uh, belt. So I'm going to lay this down so you can see it better. But you want it to form it so that this is, you have this 90 degree corner right here. You take your uh, rod that you've got cut and to clean up both ends, the first thing you have to do is make it nice and flat. See how shiny that is on the whole end? So while the belt is running, drop that up against the fence and then gently just touch it. And you're not trying to grind 100 miles deep. Just barely touch it a little bit and let off of it so it doesn't get warm until you get to see it's nice and shiny and pretty flat. Doesn't have to be perfect, but mostly. Do that to both ends real quick. Once you've done that, then take it, 
lay it at a 45 like that where one end is touching the miter one end is going to be touching the belt and laying on the surface and roll that in to where it's touching both of them at the same time and then just sit here with your fingers and roll this thing over while it's touching lightly against that sandpaper as it's running and just sit there and turn that until you've made about two full revolutions when you get done, you're not putting a taper on this. You're really just cleaning up the very tip of the threads to put a slight angle. And if you look at this, you can't even see that I did a grinding on it. Uh, it's It takes that little bit. It doesn't take much at all. And once you've done that, then all you got to do is take something that's a quarter 20. <clears throat> Let's do it. Let's do it with something easier. So... Oops. And as you can see, it starts on them very easily after you've done that second grinding, after you grind it at the 45. So, and do that to all of them. Clean up the ends by first flattening it square, and then turn it to a 45 and roll it into the belt gently as you go around it so that it touches all the way around at least twice on a very light touching of that against the belt as it's running. <clears throat> It'll give you a nice clean thread at that point without any problem. So now that you've got that done, they're ready to be put to use. So you can come back to your bench and in order to turn them into T-bolts is even quick and easy. You gotta have, I use CA glue and because I use CA glue, I also use the accelerator and I don't I, you know I'm not partial to any particular CA glue I'm sure there's good ones and bad ones uh, I buy this off of Amazon and it suits my purpose so you just take this make sure you're putting it on the right way so that that dimpled area is into the threads and screw it down till it's just below the surface on the flat side right there and then we're going to take the CA glue and put a little pool, fill that up right there at the end of those threads. And we're just going to squeeze out just a little drop. Then I do that. Sometimes I drop a little tiny glue drop on this side, but I really find that not only do I not really need it, but more than anything, uh, it kind of gums things up as you're trying to slide in the track. So I like to leave this as clean as possible, I've learned. You can put glue on this side if you want CA glue and spray it. That's up to you. But don't touch that again until that gets a good 10 minutes to cure. You want that cure as good as it can. So I just set that aside for 10 minutes now. And let it sit there until it completely cures. And at that point, you end up with. Oh, let's see if I can find one way after I got smarter. Here. See, it's nice and clean on this side, but I've got it nice and filled in on the bottom side there. You don't have to have it flat. <clears throat> the stuff sticks up a little bit. That's no big deal. But more than anything, you don't want to get it on the sides or anything like that. So this thing is now perfect. It's good and solid. It's been this, I did this several days ago. So this is 100% cured for sure. And there ain't much on there, but it's more than enough for the job at hand that you will use this for on your T-Track. So there you go. Quick and easy way to make the T-Bolt itself. So I'm going to stop this video here. Now that we've done this much, if you have any questions about how to make it or how to cut it, uh, what lengths you want to cut it to, uh, like I said, I like three inch lengths. So by making them into six inch, it kind of gives me a little bit of flexibility as I cut them the last cut. So you can do it however you want. I do always keep ready right around for that reason. And I try to keep these around. So. I've got another batch ordered, believe it or not. I went through this 25 pretty quick, it looks like. So, and it looks like that's probably about 85% cured now. So, uh, that one will not get put into use until 
uh, probably sometime until after I've used most of these zethers up. So I'm just going to mark this real quick just for fun so I don't accidentally grab it today. Um, because I'm going to start working on my box jig here pretty quick. So anyway, let's cut this off. I'm rambling. Uh, hopefully this showed you what you need to know about these. So when you come back, we're going to talk about knobs and hardware. And I'm going to show you how you can use some of the different hardware to make knobs. I'm going to explain the term to you that I call a generic knob and why making generic knobs is a great way to go in the shop for your shop uses of wood knobs. So, and I'm going to show you how to make several different style knobs here using different types of hardware and how you can use each one in such a way. So, hopefully there's going to be lots of OTB ideas here before we get done. And for a bonus at the end of all that, I'm also going to show you how to make a shop, a DIY coupler for yourself that you can use now and then. Because there was times when this is what you need. <clears throat> They're quite expensive compared to all, most other hardware. But also, I almost never seem to have these in the shop. And so I'm going to show you how you can make one in a pinch so that you can get by without any problem rather than having to run out to the shop, out to the store to get these. <laughs> so as a bonus, we're going to talk about that too. So, so stay tuned. Hopefully they won't take long. I do want to thank you for coming by. Any ideas, suggestions? Any thoughts about any of this, let me know. And this is only one way to make your own T-bolts. Now, I will tell you, I've looked at and I've tried most of them myself as far as making T-bolts. I've done it with carriage bolts. I've done it with JB Weld and washers on head bolts and all sorts of different tricks. I will tell you that of all of the ways, this is by far, to me, the easiest way I've found to make a T-bolt for my T-tracks. And also, probably one of the cheapest ways, and in in also, made 12 of these for less than, what, three and a half dollars, so that ain't too bad. <clears throat> More importantly, I made them instead of buying them, and I love that. So, uh, uh, I do want to thank you for coming by, like I said. Leave your comments, any thoughts, any suggestions about how you might make it. If you do it differently, I'd love to get new ideas. Uh, if you learn something here, you like this video, hit that like button. Most importantly, come back again because, as I said, I'm nowhere near done. Thanks, and we'll see you guys again very soon.